Hey there, home theater fans. My name is Todd Anderson with avnirvana.com and we're hanging out at the Mile High City at Cedia 2023. I'm here with Peter Aylett. This is a pretty exciting day for you. It's a really exciting day. It's the culmination of the last five years of work by an amazing group of people. And when I say an amazing group of people, we've had content creators, we've had integrators, we've had manufacturers, we've had format providers, so people from Dolby and people from Xperi. Um, it's a really broad church of industry stakeholders. And for the last five years, we have been writing this. This is the snazzily titled uh, Cedia RP22 Recommended Practice for Immersive Audio Design. And it's the first time ever that a group of independent industry people have got together to create um, a completely product neutral, completely format neutral, recommended practice for immersive audio in home theaters, home cinemas, media rooms, screening rooms. Yeah, this is really cool because previously we were left with you know, and no offense to Dolby, but we had some Dolby guidelines for Dolby Atmos and installation of their speakers and things like that. But aside from that, it was largely a guessing game for a lot of folks. It is. I think, you know, the, the industry has a tendency to be very, very product focused. And what I'd like to do is turn the industry into chefs. You, you can have a great chef who can take really, really modest raw ingredients and create the most magnificent meal. And that's what this is about. This isn't about just throwing money at the problem. This is about engineering a room, making calculations, getting it right on paper, so when it then is installed, you know it's gonna work right. And a really, really good chef, a really, really good cinema designer, should be able to take very, very modest raw ingredients, you know, well-engineered speakers, well-engineered amp, well-engineered projector, and put it together to create something magnificent. Pretty awesome. Okay, so we'll think of this, we'll stick with the cooking theme. This is kind of like the cookbook. Yeah, yeah. Now, does this start from the very beginnings of, hey, you don't have a room and you're going to build a room, so you're designing from the ground up? Or does it also take into consideration that people do have rooms that are already in place and they're building on top of that? It's a fine balance. And, you know, two things you've got to consider. Number one, it's not a standard, it's a recommended practice. Okay. And secondly, it's, it's not a teaching document. It's not, it's not a how-to guide. If this were to be a complete end-to-end how-to guide, it would probably be that thick. <laughs> so yes. um, this isn't saying that someone with absolutely no engineering knowledge, no knowledge at all, could pick up this book and engineer great rooms. Okay. This is, this is a, a large part of the journey, but you've, you still need to have a lot of knowledge and quite frankly, a lot of experience in order to implement this. Right. And there are several different levels of achievement within these guidelines, correct? There are. One of the, probably the most um, progressive thing in here is we've defined four different levels of performance for immersive audio in, okay. in these rooms. Right. Level one is what we consider the minimum to reproduce artistic intent. So when we say artistic intent is that there's been all the content creators and they've encoded the movie and it's been delivered to the customer and then reproduced. Right. Level one is what we consider the minimum to watch the movie and go, yep, I get what they're trying to do. I get it. Okay. Level two is a decent step up. Level three is the old reference. And now we have level four, which is fiendishly difficult to achieve. And level four is the highest level of um, audio that we think can be achieved these days in rooms. And with, with the four levels, what we're asking is for every single seating position in the room, that the level is predicted. Ah. And for audio, there are 21 different criteria, and all of those 21 can be calculated at the design stage. Okay. So at design, I could say, uh, Todd, I have designed you a level two room, but maybe not all the seats are gonna be level two, because let's say you've got a seat right up against a room boundary, one of, the, one of the criteria is a minimum distance between the seating position and the room boundary. Okay. Another criteria is when you sit in that reference seating position and you do your calibration and you set all the levels, you have all the levels perfect for the speakers. Okay. In any other seating position, it's not perfect. So we have criteria for the sound pressure level difference between all the speakers. Because if you're sitting next to a surround sound speaker that's there, that speaker is going to dominate your sound field. 
Sure. So the other 20 criteria might hit level four, but if you're next to that speaker there, you've got a level zero room. So you've got to hit all 21 criteria. And for level one, it's not difficult. For level two, it starts getting harder. For level three, it's really hard. For level four, it is draconian, absolutely draconian. So at the most basic level, room size matters, really. I mean, room size matters, but also the seating area within the, seating area, within right. the room size. So, so you can have a smaller room and one seat in the middle and still achieve a level one. You, you could achieve a level four. A level four. You could achieve a level four. And for a room to have a level, the reference seating position and at least one adjacent seat must hit all 21 criteria. And then you have different seats. Because the reality is, is that most customers, they want that prime seating position for them, their partner, their family. Mm -hmm. And then they, maybe they want a bunch of other seats in the room for when Super Bowl's on and you want right. to eat pretzels and drink beer. Right. Does the audio quality massively matter for those? No. Right. So the fact that those might be level zero seats kind of doesn't matter. Got it. But what, but what this brings is that rather than just selling a customer an experience on a bunch of stuff, here's some great speakers, here's a great amp, here's a great projector, you know, that will be like giving... Um, giving someone a bunch of tomatoes, a bunch of beef, um, some herbs, and say, go and cook a Michelin star meal. Right. Well, you can't. Right. What this brings to the table is um, objectivity. Right. Ob and that is something that until now the industry has missed. So I think this is going to change the game. I That's think, awesome. I think this is the single most important thing that has happened in home theatre, home cinema, screening room, media rooms, whatever you want to call them, kind of ever because um, there's a load of great loudspeakers out there. There's a load of great amps. There's a load of great projectors. There's some sure. fantastic products. But all the time, I see that product being used really, really badly. And this is the first step to say, right, we need to take a step back. This is an engineering exercise. We need to become engineers. Is, is there a next step to this, uh, giving the kind of common consumer a way of evaluating what they're potentially being sold by an integrator or a custom installer? It's a really, really good question. Um, this is a free download to anyone. You don't need to be a CD member. If you go to the CD website, you can register for it and you, and you can download it. And I'm hoping that integrators are gonna start saying, hey, Mr. Customer, I, I'm gonna design you a level, a level two room. And rather than just taking that at face value, I think the customer should say, prove it show me the engineering calculations that have then led you to the 21 different performance criteria. So here are all the performance parameters. That's one to eight, that's nine to 15, and that's oh, wow. up to 21. You know, these, these are objective numbers. Right. And in order to say this is gonna be a level two room, that integrator is gonna to have to do the math. And some of the math is complicated. That, 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 that's and the other thing that's, I think, going to be a challenge is that most manufacturers don't actually publish the data to do that. So there's one criteria, which is frequency response variation across mm -hmm. speakers. Okay. So when you're sitting in a seat, you want your left, center, right to have identical frequency response or, or near as damn to it. If that manufacturer does not publish the off-axis frequency response of that speaker, how as an engineer can I predict that I'm going to hit a level? Right, they can. So this is going to force manufacturers to publish actual real world data. Right, and very few do now. I know uh, Ascendo, Ascendo do. does. Yeah, uh, all the Harman Group do for, for all of their stuff, Perlison do, uh, PMC do. You know, there are, there are companies out there that do, you know, and I mention those because those are at the top of my head. Please don't think they're the only ones because others others do. But there are also a lot of companies, especially maybe the ones that have evolved from hi-fi mm. that are now in our space. You know, they'll say um, 200 watts. I've no idea what 200 watts means. Right. You know, what, right. what does 200 watts even mean? Right. At what, at what frequency? For how, for how long? And you can, you know, more and more reviewers are trying to produce this data themselves. But it's hard to find. I mean, it would be nice if the manufacturer was supplying it straight out of the box. It, so. it is. It's, it's not difficult to do. It's quite easy to do. But you've got to spend half a million dollars on a clipple rig. Right. And if you spend half a million dollars on a clipple rig, you put your speaker in there, you set it up, 
you press the button, you go away and have a beer for a couple of hours, you come <laughs> back and all, the, and all the data's there. So manufacturers can do it. And there's many, many, many independent testing places that manufacturers can take their products to be validated. They can just ship it there and... Ship it there, they measure it, send the measurements back, do what you want with the measurements. So it's not, you know, it can be expensive, but, it, but it's not difficult. But I, you know, personally, I would never, ever, ever specify a loudspeaker that didn't have data. Mm. You know, I, I don't care what the manufacturer says, what the tweeter's made out of, you know, what the cabinet's made out of, all of this marketing nonsense. Yes. To yeah. me, give me engineering data. And without engineering data, I'm not specifying your product. Right. Well, this is really exciting. And I put my order in for this uh, when you announced it, I think, last week, right? Yeah. Did it yeah. went live last week yeah. on LinkedIn? I saw it. and. Yeah. Went right in there, so I'm looking forward to getting my copy. Perfect. Um, before we go, we have to talk about the room behind us here that you guys designed in Italy, correct? It was it was built in Italy and then brought over here and put together in just a matter of days, is that correct? This room is actually owned by Trinov. Trinov, Trinov bought the room from us. Okay. And every show we do with Trinov, what we do is we pre-build the room in Italy. Because once you get to a show floor, um, it's noisy, you don't want to discover things have gone wrong. So it's kind of a train hard, fight easy approach. So the room was set up in Italy, it was all pre-calibrated, it was packed up, it was stuck in a 40 foot shipping container, it was shipped over here and built identically. Right. So, you know, even the subwoofers were numbered. So the subwoofer that went in location one in Italy went in location one here. Oh, wow. You know, everything was marked up and measured with lines, so everything went back in exactly the same place. Okay. And we, we built this room from a blank show floor to a finished, really, really high-performance theater in two and a half days. Right, and it sounds insane. I mean, I've never heard something in a show setting sound that good. Quite Thank frankly, you. in a real-world setting, even. It yeah. just sounded amazing. So for folks out there that aren't familiar with your company, uh, is this a product that they order? Not necessarily order, but you know, it's a product that can be installed in the home. Is that essentially the yeah, idea? That, that is our business. We do projects all over the world. We've got projects on in Europe, projects on in the US, projects on in Australia. Mm -hmm. We've got a, our biggest project ever on in a Southeast Asian country at the moment. Oh, wow. That's going to be a phenomenal rule. So we do work all over the world. Um, we don't sell direct. So we only sell through our dealers okay. because the, the totality of the experience is very much a partnership between us who build the room and then the integrator who builds and installs the technical package. So we, we work with a very limited amount of integrators around the world. Uh, we don't have many dealers because we're, we're not a massive company. And a room like this, we've got the capacity of maybe doing 15 a year, no, no more. Uh, we don't want to grow because Maurizio, my business partner and me, we love what we do. But we don't want to become business owners managing a company. We want to be AV geeks yeah. and, and build rooms. Don't we all? So um, yeah, we, we, we love what we do. We build rooms in a completely unique way. It's not just stick some acoustic treatments up on the wall and then cover it with stretched fabric. Right. The, the room is the acoustic treatments. Every room is different, but the, the platform we build it on is always identical. So a bit like car manufacturers, you might have 12 different models, okay. but those 12 different models just sit on two common platforms. If you look behind the scenes of every room we build, every room is built identically. Okay. They just all look completely different. And so the design on the inside of this one, which you're seeing right now at home, uh, is different than what you may build for customer X who's in Australia. Yeah, if you walk in and have a look at the room, none, none of our other rooms look like that. Every room we build looks completely different. If you take one of the panels off the wall, you'll see that panel fixed to our proprietary um, aluminum structure. Uh -huh. And that aluminum structure is identical in every room we build. So we play around with the gap between the panel and the wall. That panel is machined from MDF. We play around with the size of holes, the shape of holes, the pitch density of holes. We've got three different thicknesses of absorber that go on the back. Each of those thicknesses we have in two different flow resistivities. And um, we, we play around with all of those things for, for that particular system. And I, I consider the loudspeaker in the room to be inseparable. You have a speaker cone that goes into a cabinet, that makes the speaker. 
Right. That speaker is then sitting in an even bigger cabinet, which is the room. Right. And I don't think you can talk loudspeakers without talking about rooms. And I don't think you can talk about rooms unless you talk about loudspeakers. So we do different acoustic design depending on the loudspeaker. Depending on how that loudspeaker is going to behave in the room, we'll do different things to the room. And so do you get the actual equipment that's going to be going into a room, into your factory, well, you know, for testing? Uh, or do uh, you just use... We'll, we'll rely on the manufacturer's data. data. Okay. And, when, and when we're talking with our dealers, if they're using a loudspeaker that there's no data on, you know, we will say, look, we'll, we'll do our best. Right. But without the data, we can't make those predictions. And you can kind of see the marriage of that into what you're holding there in your hands. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, listen, Peter, thank you so much for hanging out with us for a few minutes and, and talking about this. Definitely something you want to sign up for. If you're a home theater geek like us, you want to have this in your hands and give it a read. And this is free, correct? I mean, this is something... Everyone. You, you, don't, um, you don't need to be a senior member. They all The only details they ask you for is your name, your email address, and if you have a company or company. That's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spearheading this and getting this out. Uh, I think, like you were saying last night, it is a game changer. Uh, it's very important to have something like this kind of pulling the industry along in a good direction. Yeah. Because uh, it does take away kind of that shady side of things where people are selling right, a product name without really telling you exactly how it's going to perform in a room. So uh, it's really neat stuff. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right, folks, that's all I have for you right now. Uh, we'll have more from the show floor later on.